it's great to meet you. Thank you, you too. so much for your time today. Yeah, pleasure. I really enjoyed the movie. Did you feel pressure to, because the first one was so successful, did you feel pressure from that going into this, this uh, remake of it? Um, I, I did feel some pressure, but I, I, I'll say not as much as I do now when I'm doing all the press, and everybody reminds me of how, how, you know, how much pressure I should be under. But, um, you know, yes, of course, there's, there's pressure, but there's pressure on every movie, honestly. There's, uh, you know, it was such a big production, and um, so, uh, you know, and, and really the, as much as people ask me, did you, did you have the pressure of what people are, are supposed to, you know, or what they, what they are probably going to expect, um, you know, the, the biggest pressure comes from myself. You know, I was a fan of the original and what I would like to see from, um, you know, a, a retelling of, of, this, of this material. So, uh, you know, so I, I added my own pressure uh, just personally, too. And you mentioned the fact the movie's big. I mean, it's, it, the, the scale of it's epic. It's uh, the set pieces are phenomenal. Did you? How do you cope with that in your mind? Like, you know, visualizing what the CG is going to look like, but also the practical stuff on set at the same time. Um, I one you have to really love it. You know, it's so much time and effort. It's I, I, I'm I'm very involved and very detail oriented with with that world. And you, I think you you have to be it. If you're creating a world from scratch, there's so much to be. In, in control of and and um, you know even right down to the you know from 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 the cars and all that like the bigger you know things but then just the the security checks and the the railings on the buildings the are there are there escalators what kind of elevators are there if you have hover cars what does that change the elevator systems as well and just so it feels like it's one cohesive world and one cohesive vision takes an immense amount of time so uh, it, it's obviously something that uh, you have to be very invested in and I, I love it. I really do. I feel like it's that's the part of it that is the, the, the kid in me that always wanted to make movies is getting the chance to um, you know the, the have enough money to actually you know like, like to actually build it out. Yeah. And and was a lot of it actually practical rather than CG? A lot a lot of it is. I think people are um, I've been talking with enough people where they assumed some of the stuff that was was CG is actually practical. Uh, I think one we're in a day and age where if if people you know Possibly, I'm guessing, but if, if they don't exactly know how something's done, they more assume that it's CG. Um, you know, we did this, uh, a couple of things that have been pointed out to me of, you know, there's a moment where Colin in, in Recall, he takes out 12 men um, in, in one shot. And it's, nobody's ever done the system that we put together with these remote control cameras that were traveling at like 45 miles an hour. Um, but most people assume that that's CG. Yeah, it looked like it. So how, how is it done? How is that? It's it's entirely practical. It's a hundred percent practical, and it's uh, it's with these cameras that are um, they're called super sliders. It's what they what they shoot um, uh, football games with, right. and it's a remote camera. Uh, it it goes forty five miles an hour, and I've always. I've always wanted to see what would happen if you put these cameras together and if you have one that starts over here, one that's ready here, and it goes 45 miles an hour, and as it crosses over this one, it's timed out that this, this camera then takes off that way. And we had seven of these things all around the set, and they're timed to, uh, um, to the fight. And I call in the, in the, and the, the stuntman had to do that fight 22 times. Exactly, um, I mean, really, really, uh, pr you know, precision. And, um, it's all timed out to a metronome. It's it's really it took us took us two days just to shoot that six seconds, right. uh, but it's all practical. So then we stitch those things together and stitch that right where the lenses cross. We do a little uh, a switch, and uh, and that's it. There's no no CG in it. So it's sort of like bullet time, but with movable cameras rather than. A, a it's actually the yeah. It's the it's it's actually the exact opposite of bullet time. Okay. Yeah yeah. It's um it's it's having the cameras. That are they're actually filming in real time. Um, that are moving cameras. Where bullet time is a bunch of still cameras that take the same shot and then you stitch all those together. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, Colin was a great character. Quay. What was it hmm. about him that you want, that you that you love so much that you wanted him to play the part? Colin was um, was he? There was a a tone and a um, just a personality that when I read the short story in college, that the kind of Quay that that I remember from that story was very different from the Arnold version that I'd watched as a kid. And that always stayed with me. And then, um, you know, I didn't really think about it. I went on and did what I did. And, uh, and when, this, when this story came about, when I read the script, part of the thing that interests me about the script was that it reminded me of that kind of Quaid that I read when I was in college. And that guy, I, I, when I read, I do picture an actor. I, you know, I think many people wait and they try not to. I can't help it. When I'm reading, I have to sort of give it a face and a voice um, to, to those lines on a page. And that person for me was, was, was Colin. And I'm, I'm very familiar with his work. 
and seen just the range of what he had been able to do. He's a great combination of, of uh, somebody who's very sympathetic, very warm and vulnerable, but at the same time is has a, a, a dangerous quality to him, probably the bad boy quality of him, where uh, you know you push him against a wall and he'll you know he'll go after you and and, and, uh, and kick your ass. And he's he's somebody that the two of those combined are are very fun, yeah. you know, to uh, to have in a character. And with Kate as well, is it strange for you watching her running around kicking everyone's butt, or do you quite? It is strange. That? It is strange because I mean it's fun because I think she does it really well, but it's 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 just something that is not. Um, uh, that, that did not come naturally to her of uh, in terms of that she thinks she's capable of that. She's uh, it always amazes her that it, that uh, she comes across as tough as she is because she's not a, you know she's not 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 a, not a tough girl um, in life. So it's um, you know we, we we laugh at how like convincing she actually is. Yeah. Um, what's coming up for you next? I've just got to finish on this last question. There's a, I mean, f there's a few things. There's, um, uh, I'm developing a uh, a script that I uh, that I'm writing with. Um, with a with another writer, that's a, an original piece. I, I'd I'd love to start to get some of my own projects out there uh, now as well, and I'm producing a uh, a Top Cow comic book called Darkness that's connected to the Witchblade universe, um, and then I'm directing a TV show, a TV pilot. Um, it's a modern day take on the um, on the Sleepy Hollow okay, tale. All right. Yeah, and that's um, I'll be shooting that, putting that together. It's uh, in January. Cool. Well, yeah. for that. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank Thanks you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right.